Give me a song check. How is it sounding to you? How is it sounding? YouTube. Tonight, welcome back to YouTube. Tonight, welcome back to YouTube, people. We're testing. We have background music, so we're not plugged in. Um, but we're broadcasting live. We broadcast it live on YouTube and Facebook. Um, so share the video. Those of you on YouTube, share the video. And yeah. Tell me the volume. What you getting as volume? Give me a song check, give me a video check, let me know what the stream is like. Doing that multiple broadcasts, it's real difficult, and tonight is the first night boat. <laughs> Shairun say good on boat, she's following us on boat, great. So we're on YouTube. Maya will put the YouTube link on the Facebook. All of the YouTube people, good night, welcome back. Sorry for the delay. Um, so welcome back to the YouTube people. And if you could, YouTube people, text your people, give them the link. Let's get the subscriptions on the YouTube channel up. It's great to be with you all Monday, 5th of March. How is Trinidad? Where are we? And where are we going? Misdirection and noise. What you get it from your government, what you get it from your opposition, what you get it from the hierarchy of office anywhere in this country. Do you feel like Trinidad and Tobago is being run? Or do you think or do you feel like it's being run into the ground? Where are we and where are we going? That is the important question every single Trinidadian have to be asking of everybody who holds a public office. And we're not doing that. We're distracted by foolishness, misdirection, and noise. And being somebody that is in the communications industry, and I understand from being involved in communications with governments, I understand that they rely heavily on deflection, misdirection, and outright deception. But you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, you have a responsibility yourself. You have to seek out the truth. You have to seek out the truth. But before we go there, let's ask everybody, is this still true? Man, the truth, the truth, the truth. Let's get the truth. The truth shall set you free. But first, as Gloria Steinem, Steinem said, it'll piss you off. We live in a country where people don't want to face the truth. We live in a country where we say, we are racist, you know, I'm a black friend, I'm an Indian friend, I'm a Chinese friend. We are racist, but we blasted racist. We blasted racist and David rather tell us how we vote is not how we party. We racist. Let me put it on the table now. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about racism in Trinidad and Tobago because without racism in Trinidad and Tobago, all of the people of Trinidad and Tobago would have a voice. Without racism in Trinidad and Tobago, the PNM and the UNC couldn't have gotten as far as they've gotten. Without racism in Trinidad and Tobago, the Chambers of Commerce and the, and the criminal contractocracy, the oligarchy that have been raping, robbing, pillaging and plundering Trinidad and Tobago, would not have only have not gotten as far, they wouldn't have gotten away. We have people in Trinidad that defend their criminals. Because when you bring up one bandit from one party, the other 
the other, the sick of ants and the talking heads of the other side will tell you, but what about so and so? And what about so and so? So we had to decide where we going. Do we want to go as, do we want to go forward as a nation, as a real nation? We talk all the time about a, vote yourself a better country. We say Trinidad is not a real country. Understand this. Understand this clearly. We had money more than Dubai. We're supposed to be a jewel on the whole world. People are supposed to be saving money. And their whole life, their whole family, one day, the goal is to touch down in Trinidad and Tobago. That beautiful country that you only, you only see in movies and you only hear about. People talk about it. A country so nice, it's so sweet. If you see that place, Trinidad nice. Boy, you could leave your money on the table. Nobody interfere with it because the people law abiding and decent and everybody doing well. A good country, run well. In that country, every creed and race, if you see how they meld together harmoniously, boy. That's who we could have been. That's who Trinidad could have been. We could have been that. Understand this. Nowhere else on planet Earth has a nylon pool. We're the only one. What do you know about it? What do you hear about it? What do we do with it? What do we care about it? Forget that. We have the largest pitch lake in the world. We have three. We have the largest. We have the largest pitch lake in the world yet. I have been trying to find an expenditure report from any government, Manning, Tamla, Rowley, that says where our pitch lake revenue goes. We don't know. Somebody teething the pitch lake money. There's been an underhanded deal somewhere because nobody can explain to the people of Trinidad Tobago where the pitch lake money go in. And I feel the pitch lake alone, I feel the pitch lake alone could mine Trinidad Tobago. But forget that. Do you know that this is the only Caribbean island outside of the hurricane belt? We're it. We are it. We are the only Caribbean island chain outside of the hurricane belt. Just us. So when it comes to marine life, yachting and pleasure boating, half of the year, for a large part of the world, where the rich and famous and the boat owners reside, life is very, very bitter cold. And for that half of the year, they would live in Trinidad. And for the other half of the year, they would be storing their boats here. And just boat storage, boat maintenance, boat repair, in the tens of thousands of pleasure craft, that would be stored here. Just that. Multi-billion dollar industry. Just that. If all the government did was, instead of the bullshit of the water park in Shagaramas, that I'm bringing nobody here, I feel that's the next way to hide money. Because it doesn't make no sense to me. Chinese will go and get all thing, but they're fighting up in that traffic forever. Something wrong with that whole very expensive project that makes no sense. A bullshit project. And instead of doing that, Shagaramas could have been used and all of Carnage on the waterfront coming right down because that is still the leeward side of the island. I'm telling you, we bless you know. From Shagaramas all the way to, down to nearly Marabella. Sheltered, you know. No waves, no set of sea blasts. All of that. Everywhere could have been marinas. We could have been, we could have been servicing, housing tens of thousands of yachts, sailboats, pleasure craft, marine craft in Chanta Bay. And when their people need to come for the boats, they pass through Trinidad, they bring the whole family, they spend two nights in a hotel. Between Trinidad and Tobago, that alone, just the yachting and the pleasure craft and the motor boating industries, they have places in Europe, that's all they do. They have places in Spain, that's all they do. Trinidad, because we were in the Caribbean, South America, um, Central America, they would have loved to come down here. They'd have boat from here to Florida and back. Trinidad, we, we wasted an opportunity. Forget that. 
our proximity between North America and South America provides a wonderful opportunity for us to get involved in shipping. The shipping industry is a trillion dollar industry. The shipping industry is massive. Shipping. We don't understand what shipping is. Nobody explained to us what shipping is. I'll explain to y'all what shipping as an industry is. If you take the whole of Point Lisas that exists now, multiply it by 10 and build a dock and a port and a war facility there with cargo exchange facilities there. So ships heading all around the globe because people build ships, shipping ships that never dock for long, you know. Those ships stay on the water forever. All they do is back and forth with cargo, touching base here, there, and everywhere. There's something called shipping routes that they pick up shipping containers from here, drop it here, pick up stuff from here, take it there, all the way around the world. And that's all they do. Trinidad, fortuitously, where we located our weather, our, our climate, perfect for it. And we could again have captured that market, massive, massive, trillion dollar industry. Singapore have no oil, you know. Singapore no gas. This is all Singapore do. And Singapore nicer than Trinidad and Tobago. Singapore nicer than Trinidad and Tobago. And if you forget that, if you forget that, the number one tourism in the world right now is cruise ship tourism. And cruise ship tourism is scheduled to grow another 100% in the next five years. They're rushing to put out ships. Do you know that there are people in the world who retire at the end of their life, at the end of their working life, they buy a timeshare on a ship and they live on cruise lines all of their lives. For the rest of their life, they live on cruise lines. They don't stay on the same ship because there's a network and you use my boat, my cabin and I use your cabin and you come in the Caribbean and I go on in the Arctic. And, and cruise industry is a massive, massive industry and it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to get bigger. Tobago was poised, perfect. We could build right now with the money that we spend it to rape the Aripo Savannah, with the money that we spend it to build Rohan Senanan's highway to nowhere, with the money that we spend it to help Keith Rowley's PNN rape, plunder, and pillage the treasury $400 million like they do with AV oil, friends and finances, backers and contractors. The money that we spend it there, we could build 20 marinas in Tobago and we could put a million tourist feet on the ground in Tobago. Just the cruise ship touching Tobago and filling up with gas and food, just that billion dollar industry. And if the people come off the boat and spend a two days in Tobago, billion dollar industry. Again, all of this, and there is a cruise um, tourism industry in cruising where you get a cruise ship and you come to an island and the cruise ship parks up there in that island for five days. And you live on the cruise ship and you tour the islands and you do all the water sports and all the back and then you go back on the cruise ship. Just that. So if they don't want, because Eric Williams didn't want black people working for Indian people, so he created dude. Eric Williams say, punish that recalcitrant minority. Take away the labor. That's what he did, you know. That's what dude was. Nobody understood. Dude, URP, CPAP, all that. Same crap, you know. Same socialism nonsense designed to separate the races. That's why we have racism. HDC, URP, OJT, CPAP is all fancy ways of spelling. Divide the people racially. That's all it is. Because they serve no functional and real purpose to anybody. HDC is the biggest ripoff in this country, possibly after Wassa and Petra Trin. Nice talk for another conversation. And a progressive empowerment party government would audit all three. Shut the HDC down cold. We will make sure that every single Trinidadian that want to own a home could qualify for financing. Build your own house, buy your own house. The government have no business in house building. That's for the private sector. But if we say 100,000 people qualify for houses up to a million dollars, that's a billion dollars right there. The private sector will lick their lips and start to build cheap house. Affordable homes, starter homes.
50,000, 60,000, 100,000 dollars. All of a sudden, things start to make sense. But the government of the day, if you don't want to go, if you don't want to undo Eric Williams' racist policy that was followed through by Bastille Pande and Patrick Manning, if you don't want to continue it, because SAT say keep the races separate so they don't glorize the nation. If you don't want to, con if you don't want to continue the racism, because the truth of the matter is, Trinidad and Tobago used to be a net food exporter up to the 70s. Up until the time Eric Williams dicked around with the agriculture sector, Trinidad was good, net food exporter. Like up to the time he dicked around with the education sector, Trinidad and Tobago had the highest standard of education in the Western world, top five in the whole world. And now we shit. PNM. When they tell me about a PNM education, I laugh. The PNM education made a shit mess of Trinidad's education. What was in place since St. Mary's College was built in 1863 coming forward was a real education system. Yes, you have to fight to get in. You don't have to lower the grades. You raise the standard of the children. You raise the standard of the teacher. No, now we have to lower the grades so children can pass. Or they will stay in school till they're 80. I ain't gonna go all there. Come back to agriculture. Right now, the world's suffering for bees and honey. And Trinidad has one of the best strains of honey in the world. And honey is a food that those spoils last forever. They found honey in one of the tombs in Egypt. Million years old. Honey's still good. Honey's still good. We have the best honey in the world right here. And we never spend no money behind it. We never did anything to develop the industry. We never put Trinidad honey in the world market. This nation is just, it's just like, you ever heard the saying, an embarrassment of riches that God don't normally give with two hands, but for Trinidad, he give with both hands. God built Trinidad and Tobago outside of the hurricane belt, perfect climate, perfect people, and he made the soil so fertile that stone could bear leaves and grow. He made this place so perfect that we have the best cocoa in the world, the best honey in the world, the best peppers in the world, and, if, and we only don't have the best of everything else because we never tried. We never tried. For organic food and organic agriculture, Trinidad and Tobago food production right now should be our number one target after housing, so rain no wet with people. But food production and food self-sufficiency, food independence is the only independence that is going to matter very soon. Go see Aleppo, go see Baghdad, go Yemen, go and see what is important in Venezuela. What is important in Venezuela is food. When the governments and the politicians play the ass and make a mess of the country, the farmer, that's the man the people turn to. The farmer. And in this country, farmers are treated like dirt, while little shit snake contractors and ball sack suckers that move with these political parties are allowed to take prime agriculture, food bearing, fertile land to build stunt markets and mini malls and strip malls and plazas and the latest thing now is gas station malls and we're taking agriculture land and we're giving these boy what a cuss so stink these nasty sons of bitches that's so rude with themselves that don't understand that everybody you see and this is what i still trying to make you know if trinidadians lose their natural good ways and start to just mash up things only cause it only cause it because trinidadians are sitting down watching business people and politicians get away with the most heinous and obscene types of crime and then listening to this disgusting sucker bag attorney general we have stunting and posing his peter pan ass in the parliament trying to come up with ways to lock up people without due process of law and his new partner in crime stephen williams saying you bring them we will hold them indefinitely. You see this place gone mad? You see gone mad? Stark raving mad and people standing up in the road saying, I want to get involved, but if I say something, the coolies will get in power. We need the niggas there. That's what I hear it. I black brother, I black, Rowley for life. I don't care, he could be behind me, bullying me right now, Rowley for life. That is the bullshit you hear when you walk about. And they want me to come on the videos.
Talk nice. Powder puff, rouge, lipstick. They don't want you to talk the truth. And they have no way to talk the obscenity of the truth that is Trinidad and Tobago without cussing, without getting vexed. It is insane. A man went all the way to the Privy Council, Nazim Bash and AV Oil, to defend their right to steal $100 million worth of fake oil. That is the audacity of these people. And they will do everything in their power to prevent a progressive empowerment party government. Because you see, they have two things they know for sure. We will make sure that every creed and race get a, they finally get their share of the pie. But more importantly, we will undo and redo this country. And all them stunt artists, sucker bag, contractor, financier, friends and family that took state property, state land, especially food bearing land, I will drive the backhoe personally. I will climb up in that excavator, partner. They will stand up and they will watch the power of the people. All them laws, all your right to make all your wrong right, we will undo and we will redo because all the people of this country deserve to have the same share. A jackass editor named Anthony Wilson in The Guardian asking me, if you say everybody can get house, where are building them house? I want to ask this mother ass, yes, you must mall and mall and cineplex building in the country. That is where house is supposed to go. If we can't plant food, put people house. Stop making asses of the people. We have more Starbucks and movie town per capita in this country than anywhere else in the world. Anywhere else in the world. They have three malls now in Chaguanas, Price Plaza, and two more just built, and our next two come in, and they're just running in a row. We, we in, that's our thing now, mall. Our thing is mall. That, that, that mall system. Every bandit want a piece of land to build a mall, and that mall system will reach down just now. Watch and see. You will connect Chaguanas to Port of Spain with mall. But all of this can only go on because we play foolishness on the ground. We talk in racism. We don't know what it means, you know. India never do black people nothing. Black people never do Indian people nothing. But it X. Nowhere else on planet Earth for no time in history. Is that any Jews and the Muslims or the Christians and the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims and the Iraqis and the Iranians and the Israelis and everybody else? It's not like that. India and Africa has no conflict ever. India and Africa never had a problem ever. In fact, India and Africa have worked together in harmony for all of their existence. So how come? In this blessed, beautiful Isle of Trinidad and Tobago, the grandchildren of India and Africa have been set apart and set on each other. How come? And if you are an East Indian or an Afro Trinidadian, I don't know what all you call it on yourself nowadays because. One man saying is black, one man saying Afro Trini, one man saying Indo Trini, the other one saying I, all kind of shit. I don't know what, all of we, I tell somebody that I do the drugstore, all of we mix up, you know, they have no more purebreds in the country, you know, just some skin lighter and some air kinkier. All of we mix up, all of we mix up, the vast majority of Trini and Tobago mix up. You could tell, you could tell, all you have to do is watch people's facial features and the size and shape of their ass. You could tell, all of we mix up. Mixer, mixer. But the misdirection and noise, they outside there, setting you one against the other. And look how well they working together. Rhoda Barrett and Inchan Ishmael. Look at that. Daryl Duku and Dane Wilson. Look at it. Look at it. When it's time to work in harmony for bullshit, no problem. All of we is one bandit family, apparently. But the day this country, and I, and I real buff some people today from Central and South who vote in UNC, they drinking yellow Kool-Aid. So they come in on my post, Liz Williams video, about the Tobagonians, the hoteliers making some noise. 
And they want to come and say you vote for that. Miss me with your bullshit, you know. Because when, you're, when your house flooding out and crocodile hole in your bedroom, you vote for that? You're walking in mud. When rain falls, mud squeezing up between your toes. You vote for that? Your children going to school and rain falling and washing out the children's school. You vote for that? So don't give Tobagonians no bullshit when they were stuck with the PNM that ravaged them because you were stuck with the UNC that ravaged you. So stop the stunting and stop the bullshitting. And only stop letting these jackass mini shit on politicians divide you. Stop it. They bring nothing of substance to the conversation. A set of all noise. Keith Rowley. Take a look at Keith Rowley. The man is a jackass on his best day. Unscripted. He's a shit snake. Have you ever listened to Keith Rowley speak? Have you ever heard a Keith Rowley speech and say, that's my prime minister? You ever hear Kamala speak unscripted? All them on the night forum. Why they had to walk up to the, to the thing with paper? You ever hear them unscripted? You ever hear them talk policy programs, ideas, past, present, and future? Every time they try, every time they try, they put their foot in their mouth. Every time. And I can tell you, I've been there for both of them. You allowed people who know nothing about what you have them doing to destroy your country. You've allowed it. We, us, we allowed this madness to continue. Colm Imbert is an ass. Colm Imbert is a jackass of a class. Colm Imbert is nobody's minister of finance. And he is only minister of finance because of nigga coolie politics. Because if it wasn't for nigga coolie politics, the whole of Trinidad and Tobago would have stand up together and say, wait now, what this jackass doing for two and a half years? But you can't. Because as soon as you Indians say Colm, black people have to say, how are you? And then the whole thing fall apart. The whole thing collapse. So he don't have to come and talk to you about decentralize the economy. Because by the time you demand it, somebody asking you, why you didn't say that when Hawaii was, in, it was Minister of Finance? Why you didn't ask Hawaii about marine and yachting and honey and thing? And you was quiet then. That's the bullshit you have to hear. You talk to every economist and finance head in this country and ask them this question for me and see if you ever get an answer that makes sense. Besides, why do we have our own currency? We're a dot. Trinidad shouldn't have its own currency. And I put to the nation, the only purpose for us having a currency is so that the banks could rape the nation. The banks are raping us without Greece since they print that first Trinidad Tobago dollar. There is something called a spread which bandit governments have allowed to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Only in Trinidad and Tobago do you sell a dollar for $6 and buy it back for $7. You know, this dollar difference, the bank keep that. They have no processing fee, no international charges, no IMF, no nothing. That is gouging by the predatory banks. And understand this, the banks don't care about nothing else in this country but that. Because every single thing that we buy and every single thing that we sell, U.S. dollars involved. We consume U.S. dollars. So the banks have applied a 13% tax on the country, on its economy, right now. Imagine that. Every time you make a transaction from a million dollar motor car to a Diana Dynamint, 13% of that transaction went to the bank. And they hear that a progressive empowerment party government has as its policy regula regulation of the financial sector. Cap the spread to 3%. Cap it 3%. But more importantly, we need to convene a conversation on us having our own currency. It doesn't benefit Trinidad and Tobago. You have a currency that could trade internationally. If you could take Trinidad and Tobago dollars and land anywhere else on planet Earth and spend it, it's a currency. Here, it's monopoly money. We exchange real currencies at the border 
for monopoly money. That is only valid in Trinidad and Tobago. But forget all of that. Ask the economists this. Why is our dollar one-seventh the value of the U.S. benchmark and has less than one-fifteenth the spending power? Why? Why is that? Why is it that you could work in McDonald's for the minimum wage and with one hour's salary, $7.25, buy seven burgers off the dollar menu? In Trinidad and Tobago, if you work for a McDonald's, the minimum wage cannot afford one item on the dollar menu. Our version of the dollar menu is the $15 menu and the minimum wage you're hitting that. So a man who works eight hours a day in McDonald's America could buy 56 hamburgers. And a man who works eight hours a day in Trinidad could buy six. Tell me, how that add up? How it add up? Well, boy, Philip, a carib is more expensive in Florida. Different shit. Different shit. Let's talk bear for bear. Because scotch lands on the port in Trinidad and Tobago cheaper than they sell us rum for. And all that extra money to take Johnny Walker Black and all them scotch high, high up in the air to make you feel like buying something expensive, you're not. It lands here for six and seven dollars a bottle. And everything else is tax and gouging. And Shivers Regal set at a price, black label, one dollar more. And they agreed to that. By upon you. And we live in a country where nobody is talking about the cost of living and the impact on poverty and poverty's impact on criminality and criminality's impact on the collapse of our society. They forming new political parties to come and talk more shit to you. Ask them about the value of our money. Ask them about our economy. Ask them about the impact of our spending power on the living wage, on the minimum wage. Why the minimum wage is not a living wage. Ask them why a house that could build for $50,000 in this country has to sell for half a million dollars. Ask them why a car that sells in the United States for 20,000 US gets to Trinidad, not for 140,000, not for 280,000, half a million dollars. Ask them why. Ask them why. And everything sounds rational and everything sounds reasonable until you scratch at it. And then you realize, wait now, if my people was working for US dollars, dollar for dollar, it's the same labor. If my people were working for US dollars and spending US dollars, Francis Fashion and KFC and Trinidad shut down. Because people will have real money with real value. And then Walmart, Kmart, Jmart, and Xmart Want to come and sell to Chinese? Not price smart and the price fixing bullshit. Check it out. That's why the business community told the Minister of Finance to jack up the price of overseas purchases. We didn't need that money. That was to make it even more difficult for you to shop online. Why you can't get US? So that they could get all the U.S., do all of the important, mark up all of it with gouging profits, and then you have to come and buy it from them. So instead of you exchanging two hours labor for a shirt, you have to exchange 48 hours labor for the same shirt. And we're not going to go anywhere as a people until we confront these issues. And we're not going to confront these issues as long as racist politics divides us. As long as racist politics divides us, as long as a law is bad under the UNC but it's good under the PNM, we are nowhere to go. 
As long as our behavior is okay under the PNM that wasn't okay under the UNC, we have nowhere to go. The truth of the matter is, and you have to start to see this, and at the end of the day, we ain't going nowhere till you do. But you have to see that all these little suffering boys with the guns and robbing people and holding up people, this is not accident, but by design. Trinidad is a wealthy nation. If these little stunters had hope and opportunity in their life, you think they're in this bullshit? You think if they, were, if they had an opportunity for jobs, and jobs that paid a, mini, a meaningful wage, and wages that could be used to have a life, because you don't have to talk the same language with them, and you can wear your pants up by your nipples, and they can wear their pants down by their ass, that don't make a difference. What makes a difference is everybody's supposed to have the same rights to the same share of the same country. But that doesn't happen now. And that's why you have these two jackasses, PNM and UNC, telling you it's we time now. When PNM and power is PNM time now. When UNC in power is UNC time now. When is it ever going to be Trinidad and Tobago time? When? When will it ever be? Trinidad and Tobago. I want to tell you something, you know. Black people like Pasa Pasa, Indian people like Pagua, white people like DDI, and everybody should be allowed to express themselves how they feel. Khalil Gibran said you could tear off your cloak just to leave it in no other man's path. We supposed to live and let live. I ain't saying everybody become one. When we say one people under one flag, keep your race. Keep your religion, keep your culture, keep your own style of self-expression. But when it comes to politics, one voice. You see, we've not had governance in this country ever because we've only had politics. We've only had noise. We've only had misdirection. Nobody has come to the country and explained to us why we have one of the highest counts of suicide in the world. Why we have the highest count of mental illness in the Western world? Trinidad and Tobago. We don't confront and resolve issues. We stunt, misdirect, distract and deflect and make noise. The Trinidad and Tobago that has the black community, the Afro-Trinidadian community, has the highest count per capita of heart disease, preventable death, from heart disease than any other country in the Western Hemisphere. I told Amory Brown that 15 years ago. And Amory Brown told me, it's not for me to talk black people business. But this is the truth. This is the absolute truth. We have diabetes causing people to lose their sight and their foot and their life and line up for years hoping to get treatment in a broken and failed health sector that costing you, the same people, $5 billion a year. If the government was to give every Trinidadian $5,000 at the start of the year and say, look, look at $5,000. is you, your wife, and your three children. I five all you. Look, $25,000. If all you get sick, go by the doctor. Pay the doctor. No more free health care. Look at 25,000. 5,000 a man. We come out better. We come out better. Because what we have is shit. What we have is shit. Nobody in this country want to take their loved one to anything that passes like for public health in this country. Our public health is a disgusting shame. And it's failed. And if your children at common entrance SEA time don't get into one of the 10 prestige schools, 90, what, 90,000 children? We have, how much children say do common entrance every year? 20,000 children do SEA every year. If your children don't get into the prestige schools, all the rest fail. Also run. Of the 200,000 children, in school at any given time, 190,000 of them have nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. We paint them in school. We give them contract to put on rain, roof and rainwater, gutter them, flash them, 
School nice and paint up. Look a man just get a contract to bring new desks. Sit down in the new desk. Teachers ain't teaching. School ain't functioning. Children coming out, functionally literate, certified to do jack all. Are we ever, is there ever, will we ever get to a place where there is a critical mass of Trinidadians willing to be anything but racial? Will we ever get to a place where when it comes to our politics, how we vote is how we party? Will there ever be a time when we as a people come together and unite to make sure that all our people get the same share regardless of race regardless of creed regardless of class that all of our people get the same share of the national pie and the same equality before all institutions of state will there ever be a day when white people are represented in the parliament again? Will there ever be a day when Baptists don't have to sell their vote to the UNC because the PNM are taking them on to get some representation? Will there ever be a day in Trinidad and Tobago where the parliament represents all the people of Trinidad and Tobago? Will there ever be a day when the government that comes out of the parliament is a functional organization dedicated to the service and management of the people and the country? Will we ever have a government that understands that the combined and total well-being of all the citizens is the function and purpose of government? Will that ever happen? Will we ever get there as a people? Will we ever get there as a people? Will we ever have an opportunity to stand together as one people under one flag? Will we ever have an opportunity to really change this country without all the misdirection and all the noise? Will that ever happen? Will we ever be able to move forward together? You see, change is something we always say, but every time we change things, we may the same way. Things keep getting worse and worse, so this is what I propose. Let's change the change for our better nation. Change the change for all foundations. Change the change so that we can say that this nation here gave from point of day. I say, change the change. Change what we teach them.
That's the absolute truth. We can talk all we want to talk, we can stand all we want to stand, we can beat the chest and we can say we have all the ideas, the thief and we have ideas, we have the plans. Listen, for every idea, the thief never a hundred more. And to be honest with you, in a perfect world, Philip Edward Alexander would never have to end up in a parliament or a government. In a perfect world, all of these political parties will get an epiphany, an understanding of their role in society and decide to serve the people of the country. All of a sudden, the place starts to make sense and I could still go on, the, on an idle Tuesday and eat shark and bake on a functional Maracas beach. Not that bullshit that the PLM and the UNC leave for us while stunters make off with hundreds of millions of dollars. We spent $60 million to pay back our park. $60 million, you know. That is worth $6 million. They spent $60 million for a car park that was already there. They paid it, listen. And they still didn't bring the car park forward and run the road behind it so that old people, children, the handicapped could cross the road without worrying about getting knocked down. So you turn in the car park and you're on the beach. But nobody in either of those two parties have an ounce of sense between them. But it's time for some pepper to burn them. What are you say? It's time to paint this country orange. It's time to unite the people. It is time to get together. One people under one flag. from the Canadian Peppers here on the phone and Anil has a, a announcement to make about an event happening in Canada. Go ahead Anil. So I just want to tell everybody that we have on the thread here tonight because I know we have a lot of Canadians on the thread. So we're asking all the Canadians on the thread tonight to come up and support the dinner and dance that we're having on Mother's Day weekend, Saturday, May the 12th. Reach out to Colin. Donna, Anthony, myself, go on the TV Canada Toronto Peppers uh, page. There's information on there. You know, you can contact any one of us and let's get this thing sold out. And just for anyone who is on the track tonight, a little surprise for the folks in Canada and anyone in the U.S. who wants to come and support us. Philip is going to be coming here for this event. So let's, uh, let's get this thing sold out very quickly so that, you know, we can really support these guys down there. Thanks a lot for that, Anil. Well done. Great job. You and the rest of the Canadian Peppers doing fantastic work. And you keep up that nice video tonight. Very nice video tonight. See you because soon. You know, I, I, keep, I, I keep saying the PNM and the UNC, they're like a cult, you know. Because what they have done to those people back home, man, it's very sad. And I, I don't know when they're going to wake up. But something's got to change because if it doesn't change, it's very like zero on the brink, you know. Thank you for that, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you soon on the ground in Toronto. Take care, buddy. Yeah, the Canadian peppers, the overseas peppers, if you want to link up, if you're overseas and you want to link up and you want to be a part of the Progressive Empowerment Party, our ambassador, the head of the overseas chapters, Ali G, contact her. She will stay where you need to go. Anil and Naz and Colin and Marissa and the team in Canada. You have Japon, Abigail and Carla Jean in Florida. The New York chapter, Ali G handles the New York chapter. We're on the ground in the UK. We're on the ground in Australia. If you want to be involved, we're on the ground. Anne Jones in Scotland. We have Helen in Switzerland. So we have people, Progressive Empowerment Party people all over the world. And if you want to get involved, it's just a matter of reaching out. This coming Saturday is fire. 
This coming Saturday, we painted La Hoqueta Talparo orange. This coming Saturday, we had Oakland Recreation Club in Brazil. This coming Saturday, March 10th from 6 o'clock, is Pepper. And I want to tell Keith Rowley, we have a surprise for you, brother. We have a surprise. We got a copy of our receipt, and we will bust that mark in Talparo La Hoqueta, Brazil. On Saturday, March 10th, we got a receipt, bro. We got a receipt. Whether the media cover us or not, they can't miss this. You see, they couldn't miss the Maxi. They had to get on board the Maxi because we tell you, when the Progressive Empowerment Party stands for something, we like a bulldog. When we bite down, we ain't letting go till it bleed. This political organization is the only voice of all the people. If you want to bring an end to the racist politics that has destroyed this nation, if you care about your land to be at all, you're not like me, you're not like any of us. This is not about love. We're looking for friends. This is relationships. This is hiring functional people to functionally run and manage the country. If you want a better Trinidad Tobago, a cleaned up police service, education that works, healthcare that delivers affordable food, a living wage, home ownership for all, real home ownership for all. If you want these things, get beyond the madness and the misdirection and noise of the PNM and the UNC and join the Progressive Empowerment Party. Come out in your numbers this Saturday, March 10th. Stand up and be counted. Stand up for Trinidad Tobago. It is time for us to vote them to hell out. Stand up for your country. Come out in your numbers. Tell your friends and family. Tell your mommy and your papi and your cousin and your tanti. Organize the neighborhood. Pile in the car. Come down the road. We in Talpara, Brazil, La Hoqueta. This coming Saturday, March 10th from 6 p.m. It's going to be a massive, massive event. Come on. And I want to know how the owners of amalgamated security are going to deal with that. Because it is the Progressive Empowerment Party's government to end the foolish stunting called justice on time, parting the traffic in the morning, moving prisoners up and down the road. And we said for 10% of that money, we could have built courts outside the prisons and give the prisoners real justice on time. Well, I understand that the AG borrow we are there. He defend. Go with it, Faris. Go with it. Let me see how much it costs, how long it takes, and if it really works. Let me see if you borrow a idea to stunt. Let me see if you can follow through, if you can carry through. Let's see if you can really do it. We're going to be monitoring. I love the fact that you're finally learning and you're listening. PepTrinBago at gmail.com is the most important email after your own. If you're going to want to get on board, send us an email so that they can start to process you one time. PepTT.com is our website. Pep app, P-E-P, A-P-P, -P, available from all the app stores, free of charge, 3474-P-E-P. -E That's the hotline. All of the, there is a Pep International email address, and I have to promise myself to keep remembering it. But remember the name, Ali G, A-L-L-I-E-G-E-E. -E. If you can't get her, get me and I'll forward it. Wherever you are in the world, there's a Pep, there's a Pep chapter, and if there isn't one, you could become one. So this Saturday at noon, we, not noon, this Saturday at 6, we in Oakland Recreation Club in Brazil. Come out in your numbers. 
especially the people of Lahoketa Talpa but this is not just for you. All of our meetings are always national meetings, but Lahoketa Talpa send a political earthquake reverberating through this country. Come and tell the PNM and the opposition that sat down there mute, dumb and silent while we have been asking this question, where is the representative for Lahoketa Talpa it is time for all the people of Trinidad and Tobago to ignore the misdirection and noise. Forget the character assassination, the back and the bullshit. Forget it. Forget it. Stop clapping like seals when politicians bust marks and go on stage and make asses of themselves. Say, hold that. Hold on to that. Tell us, was your housing policy, your food production policy, your minimum wage, living wage policy, what is your home ownership policy and your health policy? Because those policies will guide the national security policy. We don't want to hear more Baghdad and Anaconda. We don't want no more lockup and lockdown. We want a sensibly run country where none of our people need to choose crime as a way to live. If we could get that, we're going forward. Turn on Tobago. Until I see you tomorrow. Yeah, I think tomorrow. Because we will have a show every night this week as we're building momentum up to La Hoqueta. The orange train is on the tracks. We need you, you need us, we need each other. Let's get together. One people under one flag. Let's make this happen. Let's make them, let's, listen. It is a simple piece of arithmetic. There are more of you than there are of them. Stand up. And if they can't do the job, fire them. Until tomorrow, stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.